Hello, my name is Dr. Beverly Yin Thompson, and I'm an Associate Professor of Sociology at Siena College in Albany, New York. And since 2011, I've published a series of articles and one book on women and tattoos in particular. And so I wanted to make this video just to bring all of my articles together on the topic of women and tattoos and kind of talk about the thread of my research over the past decade. So um, my first article was published in this anthology, Embodied Resistance, in 2011. The article was called Myself Covered, and I just talked about, um, you know, the beginning where of my father in particular comes to mind because he's the person in my life that has hated tattoos the most and that I have actually gone to great lengths to hide all my tattoos from my father. And so I talked about, you know, his disdain, but also that I grew up in Spokane, Washington, which is a very uh, heavily tattooed place back in the 90s when I grew up. And so, you know, I grew up in a, in a cultural context of like punk rock and the Pacific Northwest in the 1990s that made tattooing just very normalized. And I just really loved this um, manner of self-expression and I really got into it. I talk about you know living in Manhattan in New York and um, older Chinese folks really glaring at me and um, you know not approving of my tattoos. But also uh, my mother is from Hong Kong and luckily she didn't share this heavy stigma that comes from uh, a lot of Asian cultures and how they view tattoos. So this first article of mine was just like a really uh, fun short. Um, personal essay that I, I was able to publish in this anthology and um, you know that's me on the cover so I was glad to uh, get to be on the cover of this book. So the second thing that I produced on tattooing um, was my major book covered in ink which is based on an ethnographic research in the field um, you know doing field work in the tattoo culture um, I interviewed 70 people, um, mostly women tattoo artists and female collectors, and I also created a 60-minute documentary called uh, Covered that was released in 2010. A different set of rules for us than men, and that's for sure. You know, when I would go out with my husband, he is heavily tattooed like me, um, and people wouldn't even look at him twice, and I would be right next to him, and they'd go you know, and they, oh my God, how could you do that? You know, when are you going to stop? Haven't you gone too far? <laughs> you know, and that just makes me mad. That makes me want to go get another one. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, you think I went too far? Well, how about now? <laughs> you know? And so this book is, um, you know, based on the same material that my documentary covered. And it, this book came out with NYU Press in 2015. So other tattoo books have really focused on, you know, what the image of the tattoo signifies, why people choose certain imagery. Um, but this book really wanted to take a sociological perspective of what is it like to be a heavily tattooed woman in American society. And so I wanted to look at the social context in addition to what imagery women in particular might choose to put on their bodies. And so I start the book, you know, with a, um, a historical overview of, of tattoos in Western society. And then I talk about the role of women in the beauty culture and the dominant beauty culture and how this kind of larger dominant culture um, puts heavily tattooed women in opposition because they're choosing, therefore, to go against these, these beauty standards and to do something that might be assumed to be quote unquote, you know, ugly. And so I especially am focusing not just on women who collect one tattoo, but on people who um, collect many tattoos, who become heavily tattooed. And especially for women, you know, for women, you have to keep your tattoos historically, especially maybe a decade or two ago, small, cute, and hidden. But once you cross that line and become heavily tattooed, you know that you've, you've crossed this line because you receive social sanctions. You know, people on the street might say comments or frown at you, um, you know, close family members or acquaintances might have an opinion that is disagreeable. So I talk about family responses, I talk about stranger responses on the street, I talk about women tattoo artists working in a male-dominated industry in one chapter. Another chapter focuses on um, employment discrimination against tattooed bodies 
And of course, having a tattoo is not a protected status in the United States. And so people can and are fired for having tattoos in the workplace. So it's a bit of a, a cautionary tale. You know, how the a tattoo etiquette of how to talk to and approach um, people with tattoos, because in public spaces, a lot of times, especially for women, they might be gawked at, stared at, even touched by strangers and ask personal questions about their tattooing. And so I just um, include a, a final chapter on, um, you know, called Towards a Tattoo Ethic on how to navigate these kinds of um, interact, interpersonal interactions. And so that was my major book that came out in 2015. So in 2018, I published a chapter in the anthology called Subcultures, Bodies, and Spaces, Essays on Alternality and Marginalization. This article focuses again on the distinction of um, heavily tattooed women, and it really couches this article in the literature of subculture. And so defining how subcultures, you know, define themselves through in-group, definitions and how they exclude the outsiders and so within the tattoo subculture how women's position is related in this um, subcultural world and also just the ways in which women specifically have to deal with this um, you know entering this subculture that is more um, deemed more masculine more of a man's world and so they have extra layers to deal with which includes, you know, some of the discussion coming from my book Covered in Ink about women dealing with how they're perceived in society, that they're always supposed to be striving to fit into this beauty culture. And so when they do things to their bodies that's deemed, um, you know, making themselves ugly, they get a lot of social friction from that. And so that's what this article really overviews. In 2018, I published an article called LA Inc. Tattooing Gender and the Casual Leisure of Tattoo Television in the International Journal of the Sociology of Leisure. And so this article, as the title states, focuses on the television show LA Inc. Because that was the first show following Miami Inc. which really featured an all-female cast in a tattoo shop. And so Kat Von D, of course, you know, came out of Miami Inc. She was the female tattoo artist. And so she left that show to create her own show called LA Inc. And she hired a bunch of women and, and one um, male tattoo artist to work in her show in Los Angeles. And so they talked a lot about the gender issues within the, the culture of um, being a tattoo artist. But of course, this article goes deeper into looking just at representation, media, um, you know, product placement in the shows, and consumer culture. So this is a media studies article that focuses on tattoo television culture. In 2019, I published another article in the same journal, International Journal of the Sociology of Leisure, and this focused on the leisure aspects of tattoo collecting. The title of the article is Women Covered in Ink, Tattoo Collecting as Serious Leisure. And so this article uses um, Dr. Stebbins framework of serious leisure. And so talking about how people who are really into their subculture or hobby put a tremendous amount of effort into their collection process. And so this focuses on looking at tattoo collecting as a, ser a form of serious leisure and especially what that means in gender terms. So in 2019, I published an article in this anthology, Tattoo Histories, Transcultural Perspectives on the Narratives, Practices, and Representations of Tattooing. And this book was quite amazing because the editor of the book was able to bring all of the authors in this book together to a tattoo conference in Germany. And we spent two days together presenting the papers that appear in this book, meeting each other, socializing, getting to know our other fellow tattooed researchers. And so this was one of the most amazing conferences I've ever been to and one of the best anthologies um, you know, to participate in as far as meeting collectively in this endeavor. And so for this book, I published an article called Mi Familia, Latina Women in the U.S. Negotiate Identity and Social Sanctions Through Tattooing. And so for this book, I really focused on the Latina women that I had interviewed for my book Covered in Ink, the Latina tattoo artists, the collectors, 
and just focused on the type of imagery that they collected that was related to their personal identity, their ethnic background, uh, cultural symbolisms that meant a lot to them, and what it meant to become a heavily tattooed woman within their cultural context family um, relations and so on. And so um, this was a great anthology to, to be a part of. In this article called Hong Kong Tattoos, I shift my focus of tattoo culture to look at Asia. And largely, you know, in Asia, tattoos have been stigmatized, even criminalized. As the world witnessed the protests in Hong Kong in 2019 as Hong Kongers fought for democracy, more representation. They fought against the extradition law to mainland China. And so then protesters also incorporated tattoo art to express their political opinions. And in particular in this article, I look at three tattoo artists, uh, Crack88, Zada, HK1, and Flash5788, and how they use these iconic images. And so I thought that that was really uh, interesting and specific to talk about how tattoos were promoting these political messages within Hong Kong culture and how Hong Kong culture is really shifting and tattoos are becoming popular in Hong Kong, in China, in all of Asia, even against this historic backdrop of stigmatization and criminality. And so for my very latest academic article on tattooing was published in 2020 and it was published in the Fashion Theory Academic Journal. The article was called Academ Inc. University Fashion and Its Discontents. And so this is the latest ethnography that I've um, endeavored upon. And so what happened was I interviewed 50 professors who have tattoos, you know, um, people who are um, predominantly women. I interviewed some men. Um, you know, have different racial backgrounds, um, members of the LGBTQ community, people with disabilities. And so I talked about what it's like to have tattoos in the classroom, have tattoos in, in the professional academic uh, employment sector. But this was also an analysis of just the neoliberal university that we find ourselves working in and how that especially impacts marginalized faculty within the profession. So I landed in, um, in Los Angeles in 2001, and I started working in a community college in, in a, within a matter of months. Then I started picking up classes, and at one point I had th six classes at three different schools. You know, in the, in the 17 years that I've been teaching, there's only been three incidences where a full-time position came up in my department of which I was qualified for, uh, of which I interviewed for. It's very hard sometimes to get a second. I thought for, I was guaranteed to get the second interview with the, with the president on some of those occasions, but I didn't. And so here I am 17 years in. And so um, this was my first article to come of this um, large scale ethnography of interviewing 50 tattooed professors. But right now, this summer, I'm going to be working on um, submitting out this book proposal. And so hopefully my, um, my third book will be on tattooed professors, which is just kind of a narrative device to really focus on workplace issues within marginalized communities in the academic work environment. So that's my hopefully my forthcoming uh, work within my tattoo research series. So thank you for uh, joining me in this discussion and hopefully you can check out some of my work, check out the documentary which is fully online and linked to in this video and um, you know, look forward to future publications.